So, uh, hello everyone. My name is Fong. Uh, I'm accompanied by my friend Hui, uh, which will cover the next part of the presentation. Uh, I'm also known as CNX, so uh, that's my matrix nickname. So, if you need to mention me. Uh, in this talk, we will try to uh, explore a relatively new idea uh, that is using a peer to peer. Uh, transport medium to deliver Python packages. Um, so first we start with the motivation and then we will uh, go through, through some ideas and how we implemented those ideas and we will have our self elevation and uh, a call for contribution. Uh, so first, why, why do we want to have an alternative to PyPI? Uh, well, PyPI is um, the warehouse in nature is uh, a place where you try to stack packages in and uh, pe multiple people operate in there and don't really uh, aware, are not really aware or integrate with each other. And because of that uncurated nature, there are uh, common issues like table squatting and distributing malware uh, that Thankfully, thanks to the admin team, they uh, they usually find them before they uh, do any harm. Uh, it's also a single point of failure. Uh, the, there are occasional CDN outages uh, due to uh, some unfortunate reasons, even due to DNS problems. And uh, for security, it's also a single point of failure because the checksum in the URL uh, deliver URL of the data of the packages are delivered from the same origin. So somebody that take control over the warehouse will be able to affect both of those. And uh, in 2016, we also have the same incident for uh, Linux Mint uh, ISO image. Uh, but I think it's kind of rare nowadays that somebody really take over a large server. We will see. Uh, it's also very expensive uh, dependency resolution that are pushed to client side. So, <clears throat> uh, unlike if you are coming from a traditional, more traditional packaging system, as in GNU slash Linux distributions, you have the packages mostly resolved for you and the client. Uh, don't re really need to spend a lot of effort on downloading and uh, validating the dependency. Uh, uh, relationships uh, and those the things that are working right now could break in the future when one of the, those packages are updated. So the uh, upper and lower bound of versions don't uh, will not always be uh, the source of truth. And uh, these are two major outages that I noticed in the uh, last few months. And this is not to bash the PyPI team. I know that they are run by some of the most brilliant people and they are they cost millions of dollars each month to operate, thanks to that information uh, yesterday. Uh, but it's, uh, I think it, as a centralized service, it's something that will always happen, uh, no matter how good we are at it. Uh, and <clears throat> because of all these drawbacks, uh, it puts the upstream developers in the situation that they have to uh, have many workarounds to make sure that their software will always work. And uh, as for dependency issues, they uh, many resulted in log files and pin uh, dependency to a very strict uh, manner. Uh, for downstream developers, sometimes they consider this to be too strict and make it uh, quite difficult to package downstream. And they also need to replicate the checksum hashes uh, so that in case that the central uh, index is ever exploited, they will already have the correct hashes at hand and will not need to rely on the central index. And because of reliability issues, some will need to run their own uh, mirror or catch 
server of the index like devpy. So uh, what this leads to the question like what is the responsibility of an upstream developer, somebody that develop application or library? So we, th we try to uh, use the root of the analogy of this as a river. So upstreams are the, in here, uh, the cyan, the blue, um, smaller rivers, and they can only see what is uh, a um, what is above of them. So they only see their dependencies, but they don't see other streams, not directly. So they don't know if they are going to integrate well with other upstreams. Uh, the Magenta, the purple-ish uh, big river, on the other hand, see all of the upstreams and they can try to integrate them together uh, on the same platform, on the same system. And all of this, we, all the developers, we work together for one single purpose, uh, that is to serve the end users. So thinking about uh, the last uh, slide, then upstream seems to be forced to be doing too many things at the same time. And in my opinion, what they really need to do is writing good software. And I know that we, that I know that they are really good at it, but unfortunately due to the uh, many works related to packaging that they don't really have the time uh, to fully spend on what they do best. And that's all, that's all they, should do and we packaging people that are working in packaging should do our best to help them. And uh, if we think for downstream developers, dependency pinning should be limited uh, to the most extreme. So uh, because of this, we think of <clears throat> a new way to uh, have a subsidy. Um, alternative to PyPI, and we look into what uh, it is serving. So essentially, it's the Python simple, uh, simple repository API, which is also known as PEP 503. Uh, it's served at the uh, PyPI uh, simple uh, root, and it's uh, really simple. It's, as, as it's called, it's only HTML view of the directory like tree. So we have the first, the simple page showing all of the packages name. And in each of the directory, we view them, they will have the list state of all of the uh, package distributions that uh, belong to that name, to that project. Uh, and we also notice another technology that is the interplanetary refi system. And we want to use that to as the infrastructure to serve the uh, package index that we are trying to build. So it's a peer-to-peer -peer network and it will not have single point failure, not even at the uh, DNS level. So it's pretty safe as long as somebody is hosting a node and you're connected to somebody that connect to that person, you can also be sure that you can reach the data. And it's content addressing in a global namespace, which means that if you store the same data as somebody else, uh, you can both surf and download the same uh, package without any sort of further coordination. All you need to do is to have an IPFS node and have the same interest in that same content. This makes mirroring a lot easier. Uh, and the way that the files are, are, are organized is through a Merkle DAG uh, that is uh, uh, a cyclic graph. It's like git commits, but instead of for history in time, it's for directory in space. So for every content, which is either folder or file, the parent of that will have the, the idea of the parent of those contents will be able to dictate uh, what are the ch children that we have, which means that as long as we know the top level, the root, the content ID of the root directory, we can know the content ID, we can be uh, cryptographically sure of the content ID of every single uh, child content recursively. And last but not least, this is uh, really fun that 
the HTTP gateway of IPFS is exactly the directory tree in HTML. So it matches uh, PEP 305 uh, com completely. Um, and so we put those two together, IPFS and uh, Python simple repository API, and we get the new thing we call floating cheeses, um, which is also uh, which is often found in the flying circus. Uh, and uh, the canonical name is interplanetary wheels. Uh, I usually pronounce it ape wheel. I don't really know how to correctly pronounce that. Uh, it's basically a simple API on IPFS. And uh, it only, there are a few important thing. It doesn't try to replicate PyPI completely, but only serve wheels. And those wheels must be unique on every platform and they're singly versioned. So on any, any platform, you can only install one single wheel of uh, under a name of one project. That's always guaranteed. So it's, uh, in other words, the downstream repository. And the way we build it is through declarative, um, uh, declarative form, uh, files, uh, which declare what uh, con what content we are uh, storing and still other metadata. Um, I think uh, it's now Hui's turn. Uh, the organizer is. Uh, where's the chairman? Huh. Uh, hi. Sleep. Hi. Uh, is my co speaker here? Uh, no, I sent him no. a message. Okay, so on one. That, that's fine. Uh, because it's really late here and he might overslept. <laughs> so uh, it's fine. I will continue the rest of it. Uh, uh, so, uh, okay. So this is the declaration format. And uh, <laughs> so we have the source that points to the uh, original wheel. This can be something that we just. Uh, <laughs> shamelessly steal from PyPI, but it can also be something that we build from a source from PyPI or any uh, other source that we deem as trusted. And we make sure that the building is uh, over a uh, over a publicly verifiable place like a uh, public uh, uh, continuous integration service. Uh, it would be best if the bills are reproducible, but the work on the reproducible bills for wheels are still ongoing, and we don't really, uh, we, we are not really working on that. So we're really praying that people are working on, on it uh, will find us a general solution for all type of uh, PEP uh, 517 backends. And uh, the next thing is that it's the content ID, which is the analogous to a uh, checksum hash of the data that we declare. And uh, the rest are the requirements uh, of that wheel, the metadata that we extract from the wheel for uh, other tasks that we will do next. So for every declaration, we will perform checks to make sure that they fit the criteria that we want to promise the end users. So the first thing is that no pair of wheels uh, from the same project will be installable on the same platform, on the same system. So for every system, which include in the same interpreter, the same architecture, the same OS, the same uh, ellipse version even, then they should be able to install only one, uh, one wheel, exactly. Uh, no dependency resolution will ever be needed. And the, verif the wheel source must be verifiable. This is usually verified by hand. Uh, we need to trace down on the wheel source uh, until we find something that's creditable. It's either uh, a table published by upstream or it's a wheel that is published on PyPI at the time that we know that it is not currently being attacked. Uh, and the metadata in the declaration must match the, that in the wheel, uh, uh, which you know, both the checksum and the other requirements. And in all of the declarations together, they must form a graph of dependencies where 
every dependency is satisfied, including optional dependencies. Uh, well, at least that's what we first thought that is possible. But after a few months, uh, we realized that uh, not always optional dependencies in Python packaging are really optional dependencies. Sometimes they are uh, convenient names that we use for uh, the local development dependencies, and we just exclude them again by hand and verified by human. And all of this is somewhat kind of expensive. If somehow we can get uh, more automations, it would be lovely. Um, for publishing releases, uh, so after all the checks are done, we can start to publish releases from the declarations. And <clears throat> uh, we can also use something that's already published before and try to reuse what uh, I already downloaded and then uh, publish to the new uh, index. And that index is uh, defined by only one single container address, container ID. And then we cryptographically sign it uh, in a Git tag and uh, deliver them to the end users. So the same wheels, many wheels that are not released between the uh, snapshots of our repository will be shared uh, because they are the same CID, and which means that a mirror that runs uh, in the previous, uh, that mirror the previous release can also serve people that are running the next future releases if somehow a package is not updated. So for using uh, if will is really simple. You only need to get uh, a CID from uh, our Git tags, and then we set up an IPFS gateway. Uh, at that URL is either locally set up, or you can use a publicly available gateway, or even uh, the organization can set up one. Uh, preferably, you try to download them first for faster speed. Uh, and then you try to configure uh, your client, like pip, to uh, use that new index uh, for all of the packages. And uh, well, installing, uh, updating, uh, do things that you usually do with package managers and profit, I hope. Uh, so uh, with what we tried, uh, we think that it has a few interesting properties. So for efficiency, it has no client-side dependency resolution, which can be uh, cheaper. Uh, and it <clears throat> also uh, make use really good use of local original network catching. Uh, as I said before, if you can somehow convince your organization to uh, have a, a, a locally run index of it will not only that your organization will benefit from it, but organization nearby will also uh, benefit from the localized speed that uh, it brings. And for security and reproducibility, uh, we also dodged uh, all of the untrusted code uh, execution because we, well, of course, it has to be somebody that uh, needs to be trusted and it will be the industry maintainers and they will, we will, or they, I don't know, <laughs> will uh, verify that the source is trustable and we build the wheels beforehand. And uh, we verify that the package is not malicious and we uh, will try to eliminate all of the uh, suspicious ones. Um, and for security uh, of deployment and reproducibility, with only one CID, uh, we are able to pinpoint all the dependencies for reproduction, and we don't need to have to pin all the, the versions, all the hashes. And most importantly, we think that it promotes reuse and collaboration, collaboration uh, because it uh, promised that packages are integrated together, which means that you can use this package, uh, package A, that depends on uh, many others, and package B, that also depends on many others, that have, may have shared dependencies, and you can confidently use both A and B without even worry that they might have uh, breaking dependencies. So as long as you can find it in our repository, uh, it should uh, work uh, with each other really well. And also encourage upstream contribution, because in the process, we will find out if uh, packages 
don't work together and we try to have the integration or maybe they really work together but they are just strictly defined the dependencies are strictly too strictly defined and we just relax it a bit and voila it works <laughs> um, and also promotes collaborative self-hosting uh, so self here is either a single person or organization that uh, they can host and unlike DevPy, not only that yourself is benefit from it, but everybody that needs the same content will automatically benefit from your mirrors. And uh, well, that is uh, good. And some of that is theoretical because we don't really have user base uh, because of many reasons. Uh, the, <laughs> the first one is a lack of review and testing. We've never got any reviews from uh, any third parties of how of any of this will work. Uh, well in practice, and we don't have a lot of human effort to test that uh, everything uh, work well together. We don't really run the integration test of the packages itself. We just based on what they declare and think of them as honest. Uh, and because of the lack of development team, uh, the updates might be slow. Sometimes you would get uh, older packages in the repository, and the number of packages so far is very, very, very limited. Is uh, under 600, and if I recall correctly, they are uh, like a quarter of a million packages on PyPI right now. Uh, the metric support is limited. We only support uh, major operating systems on the AMD64 at the moment. Um, and the lack of mirrors, because we don't have users, so we don't have mirrors, and we, we don't have mirrors, so everything is slow, and we don't have users. And the most uh, ugly part is that we are really lacking industrial maintainers. And so if you want to help, uh, please do. Uh, we will have the contribution uh, guide at the end of the talk. And for future plans, we will try to run the packages test suite. Even a smoke test would be hugely beneficial. Uh, we would also try to look into how we can build the wheels reproducibly. Uh, so uh, they, they would need uh, less trust would be needed uh, on our ends. And I think that's a good thing. And we also try to have in environmental self markers. So there are markers for the packages themselves on where which kind of environment uh, these can be installed to. Uh, it's like wheel tags, but uh, it's a bit uh, more powerful than that uh, because you can have full conditionals on it. And we will try to figure out if we have new contributors on how to scale the human effort horizontally with many more people. We try to not fall into this packages uh, style of development where we have thousands of idling pull requests and only a few uh, people that can really uh, watch all of the issues and uh, many will get burnt out if they try to. And I, I think that we need to have some kind of hierarchy on the development of a downstream project. Uh, so if you want to help, uh, you can run a mirror by using a PFS and pin a CID uh, from one of the tags. And you can also check out our uh, project page uh, for the uh, for the contribution guides. Um, note that all of the slides here will have uh, links uh, that you can click on. So if you download them, you can find them. Uh, so if you have questions and feedback, uh, you can send us an email or join our matrix uh, room over there. So I think uh, the presentation is over. Thank you very much. Uh, we are running a bit over. I don't see any questions yet, but uh, I will ask one because I'm curious. Uh, you say you don't have many people running mirrors yet. Do you have any recommendations for the people? Because from my previous experiences with IPFS, running a node is kind of annoying to be able to communicate properly for opening firewalls and things like that. Uh, do you foresee people mostly using, downloading data through the gateways? Um, to be honest, we don't know. I We don't have the infrastructure to run any mirrors. Mm -hmm. I, I run the local node for all my uses, but uh, they are limited to my local network only. So I can't help it with that, but there's a matrix room for IPFS. Mm -hmm. So uh, I can try to invite you there, if you can ask them there. They're really active there. Uh, there's a lot of uh, other discussions happening on the ele on element that are related on the how you did the package description. So if you can stick stick around there and also yes, I, I will be sitting around. Okay, so I will stop sharing screen and. Uh...
let the next uh, talkers join. Okay, thank you very much.